Hi. All right. So our long way to talk, um, how to embody the state of your partner. It is one thing to know everybody as you pushed out, and it's a whole nother to be in a relationship with 3D and understand what that means. Okay. Um, so I'm doing this really quick to describe how to interact and how to understand the mirror, how to become the person you are seeking to understand, how to adopt their perception, what are you seeing in between. Now, for those of you that are new to this group, you will learn that I am behind the veil, okay? Um, you will get used to me by the way that I say things that you've probably never heard of like I'll tell you what planet you're from or I'll tell you where you've been or what your what's in your Akashic history I will tell you all kinds of things guys, and it won't sound uh, It will probably be the first time you've ever heard something like that before so I take a little getting used to okay so knowing that means I see behind the veil. Hi, Daniela. Hi, Ruthann. Love you guys. <laughs> All right. So with that understanding, I'm going to first break down a example of what happens in an argument and how both people are fully convinced that they are correct mm -hmm. and that the breakdown in communication is actually occurring because we believe our side is not being heard. We believe we are correct and they are wrong, therefore we've tuned out what they're saying. So let me explain what exactly it is that you're seeing and how your point of perception determines what that is and that in fact, Person A and person B could be looking at the exact same thing, but have in a totally different point of perception. All right, so let's start. Let's say you're in a relationship and you uh, are arguing. Right now, at this moment, you're arguing because you feel that they don't understand you and you don't understand them and blah, 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 or whatever the case may be, okay? So let's say that this couple is standing on either side of each other. They are staring at the six, and uh, one of them is staring at a six and is saying, it's a six, it's a six, it's a six, okay? And insisting it's a six because all evidence around them points to that being a six, okay? Then the, then the level of the tone starts to get angrier because how can you not see that it's a six? Okay? <laughs> and so now the argument has gone full scale because this person is saying and insisting it's six that they are looking at. Okay? However, the person on the other side of that six, their point of perception, they don't see a six at all. They're looking at it and they're saying, it's nine. It's a nine. How can you not see that it's a nine? What the hell? It's nine! <laughs> if it got that bad, okay? And now you're yelling back and forth, okay? And what neither of you has considered is that both of you are correct. Your point of perception is determining what you see. The cognitive dissonance is occurring because you're at different angles of perception and therefore you are arguing what exactly you're seeing. But both of you are seeing the exact same thing. This is the same thing as the uh, Indian equivalent of when you're asked all the blind men to hold a piece of the elephant and each blind man will describe the elephant differently. All of them are correct, but their point of perception is determining how they describe the elephant. So if they're holding a tail, they're gonna say it's like a snake or something, you know, a fuzzy one or, <laughs> you know? Or if you grab one of its legs, you're gonna think it's like a tree trunk. You know, all of them are describing the exact same animal. Their point of perception, however, is changing what they see. Is that fair? Now, if you understand that everybody is correct, and if you understand that, then here's the thing. 
I'm not going to claim that this is easy. So I want to tell you guys what I do for me because I want people to understand that in the moment, it is very difficult not to react. We're on autopilot, okay? A lot of us don't realize that our wounds are determining the behavior and what we think we are seeing. And because of those wounds, that is truly what is in the way of actually understanding each other's point, okay? That's the wound that's in the way. So, for example, in my case, it before it gets too bad, I know my weakness. I know that I say things that I don't mean when I'm on autopilot, and I will explain why. Because as a child, I was not in the best of situations in a lot of my childhood. None of it was safe. A lot of it was not. There were a lot of times where supposedly the people that I was supposed to trust with my life because they had something to do with it, I could not trust, all right? As a defense mechanism, what happens to a child that this, that this occurs to? We start jabbing before we're jabbed. I'm just telling you what it is. This is me, okay? So I had to learn to develop, okay, a way to compensate, and that's truly what happens to people, okay? They get defensive, they're protecting themselves, and they'll do this kind of thing. So I know enough about myself to know that that is the weakness of mine that goes into autopilot when you hit a certain nerve and my emotional stability goes onto autopilot, defense mechanism. It's what's programmed in my mind since childhood. It's all I know, right? So what I did, okay, to be a better partner, to not hurt because you can't take back words, right, is learn to say, I need a moment. I need you to back the hell off, okay? And I need a moment to go think about what it is that I'm seeing, okay? If you give me this moment, I will come back and be able to discuss. But we just hit a point where I'm about to lose my shit. And I'm going to be unkind and I'm going to be mean. And you're not going to like what I have to say. And I don't want to go there because I love you enough to not want to do that to you because here's the thing, you don't escape your karma. So what's gonna happen in this couple, if you do this to another person, you're gonna be on the receiving end of what you've done automatically. They'll do it for you on autopilot. All right, so with that understanding, that's the reason I take a moment. And this is what I do to try to understand my partner. And, and this is a very difficult thing for people to understand because usually what happens in an argument when someone says, time out, I need to take a break. They start chasing you because they want to be heard. They want you to understand that it's six. So they're chasing you, chasing you, chasing you. And you're like, listen, I'm telling you it's nine. And until I can see a six, I need you to back off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but they're insisting which makes the argument escalate, okay? So best course in action is to have this conversation with a partner and say, listen, here's, here, here's me being me and being real honest about what I need. And when we hit a certain point, I would like to call a timeout, but the timeout is not so we can continue arguing, not for a silent treatment, not for anything. It's for me to take a moment to myself and see what I am arguing with myself about, okay? Because if you remember correctly, when you love someone, you have already seen that their experience is your experience, their body is your body, and you are arguing with yourself, not them. Okay, you're arguing with yourself. These are your experiences made into a new body. But believe me when I say there is the source light and its mirror. Or the source light and its mirror. And you trade places 
in this understanding for as long as you want, but the source light is the one determining what everything outside is doing. All right, so when I take this moment and, you know, I've had long-term relationships, so they've had time to know, oh, Cindy just hit her point. I'm gonna let her go, take a moment, okay? Then this is the moment that I come back and yes, you against you, Ruthann, absolutely. That's when I take a moment to understand what exactly I'm trying to protect myself from, okay? So let's say, I don't know, it could be anything, but let me give you an example. Let's say I um, had a history of abandonment or abuse or anything, okay? And so what happens when you have these histories is you anticipate their need to cut you. They're not going to cut you. You understand? You're anticipating this. So you have to own the fact that anything that happens out there is because of you. Okay? So if that's the case, then stopping this behavior within yourself stops the drama outside of you and being honest with yourself to understand what exactly you're trying to protect yourself from. A lot of the chaos, a lot of the, um, the childhood memories, like for example, um, let's say if you, um, and see, some, a lot of people that I'm meeting now have had these great parents, so they don't relate, but I wasn't one of those people, okay? I stand with the other, I don't know, 70% of America that came from a dysfunctional family, right? So if that's the case, then understand that there are some painful, really painful experiences that you're avoiding. And so you see things through that filter and it doesn't even have to be childhood. Let's say, for example, you got cheated on the first time, you got cheated on the second time, you got cheated on the third time. At this point, you've realized you're the common denominator, okay? And you don't trust. So what happens to the person who's pure? They will appear like cheaters. And so if you're not able to discern what wound is filtering the division between you and another person, that's what this time is about. It's an honest look. So for example, uh, my father was an alcoholic, a weekend alcoholic. I wasn't raised by him. Thankfully, I didn't have to live in that hell. However, I did hear about it later and I heard about how destructive and how angry he is and all kinds of things later. And I was like, oh, there I am. <laughs> That's my dad and I are the same person, <laughs> you know, but okay. Let's just say I then later, because your wound is going to mirror things, I later um, get into a relationship with an alcoholic, okay? That wound is alive in me and I'm going to be reacting to that. And I need to see what in me needs acceptance. I need to be able to look at what experiences are on display. Am I upset because it feels like it's my ex-girlfriend's experience on top of my new girlfriend's experience and and I'm now seeing this experience repeat itself and that's what I'm trying to protect myself from because that person that's new and that's totally free hasn't had this experience and is owed the respect of you clearing out your wounds first so that they're given a fair chance okay and that's easier said than done. In love, that is what you two are doing. In love, when you unite with someone, what you're trying to do is heal yourself enough not to see divisions. And when problems occur, you're working on them together. But what you're really, really doing is trying to achieve the harmonious state that would occur because you have accepted everything that you are. So in being able to step into their shoes and being able to see from their perspective, you would have to have full self-acceptance of all of your experiences, whether you like them or not, okay? I'll give you a few examples. I'm using myself, because I can only speak from my experience, okay? But to give you a few examples, right? I just gave you the story behind my father, okay? Um, as a child, 
I did not understand this. I felt abandoned. I felt betrayed. I felt all kinds of daddy issues, right? That was inside of me. All right. And what happened as a result of that is that I would get in relationships and as soon as they got too close for me, because I wasn't that into them anyway, I would get rid of them. Okay? That was a defense mechanism. I'm not proud of that. I'm just saying what I did on autopilot to defend myself from my wound. Now, because I can recognize it, I can look at myself and see what is happening. Okay? How does this help me in a relationship? Well, what happens to you when you start defending your point? When you start saying it's six and the other person's like, it's nine, it's six, it's nine. And, you know, you're defending your point of experience without looking at the other experience that is also yours. The point of contention is your experience. When you can look at it and accept it, it totally changes. So what I mean to say is when that person starts acting defensively, you should recognize that rather than anger, that's a plea for help. That's a plea to be heard. There, it's a chance to take your wound out of the equation and look at it differently. So when I say that I take on their experience, what I do is I go, I take my time, I go into my own space, and then I close my eyes, and then I look at the fight. I listen to what they're saying, but not from arguing, it's six, it's nine, because that's not going on anymore. I took my time out. And then I'll listen again and see what it is that I'm missing. I know this is easier said than done unless you recognize all of your experiences. If you are able to do that from a calm place, you're able to see what they're trying to say, understand what they're trying to say, and from a calm place, you can say, oh my God, it is nine, but it's only nine because you're standing right there. Come look at my side. Look, it's six. And then you're both like, oh my God, we're both right. Do you see? <laughs> There's a compromise that happens when you take a step back and take a moment to understand the argument is with yourself. What is it that you're trying to protect yourself from? What is this chaos? Why are you so defensive about something not happening again? Okay? Because let me tell you what happens to the person on the receiving end of those feelings. It's repelling. Okay? It's an insult. Because maybe the person you were with has the best of intentions, wants to be the very best they can be for you, but you're expecting the worst and you don't even realize it so when you argue you're like i just don't want this to happen again i'm telling you it's a nine it's a nine it's a nine you know and so you start defense defending that if you are able to look at another human being and realize that they are mirroring something that you are doing in yourself and that you need to see it in order to bridge the divide then you are able to live harmoniously you're not always going to agree on things, but at least when you're able to let your guard down and speak calmly, this is communication. When you are arguing, you guys are speaking at each other and nobody's hearing a thing. Nobody at all. Okay? So you guys know that I practice stepping into people's bodies okay i practice this this is very important to me um but it's because i know all bodies are illusions that all i'm doing is stepping into another part of my experience and because i'm able to recognize that it's a little easier that's why you can only be in a relationship when you're like harmonious in a relationship when you're truly accepting of yourself 
because these experiences are what's being mirrored out and whatever points of contention need to come out are going to be mirrored by your partner. And in those moments, they may be painful. They may be things you don't want to look at. They may be memories that you don't even understand why you're protecting against them. But these memories are important because these are the things that ensue fear. Okay? And when they ensue fear, you are no longer yourself. Do you know who you are? In fear, you are survival mode self. Trying to protect yourself from yourself. So your speech, the way that you talk, everything that you say will come from that injured standpoint. When you're peaceful and calm and able to communicate, take your time and are able to take an honest look at yourself and say, here are the things about myself that you should know so that we can get along. And you're able to convey that. And then you're able to develop a communication style and you're able to call a time out when you need it. That may not be a bad thing. You know, not everybody has my temper. Mine is inherited. I am my father's daughter. took me a long time to be able to say that and accept it and be proud of that. Okay. So in these cases, what you are doing is trying to bridge the divide. What are you seeing? What experiences are being mirrored back? Okay. You're supposed to recognize these things. A lot of the times, this is the only thing that they're doing, but in each time you have to appreciate what's being shown, even when you don't want to see it, because what happens is if this person fails to show you inside yourself, okay, the rest of the world that appears outside of you, outside that funhouse mirror, gets a crack at you too. But what's true of one relationship is true universally. So if you can solve this in yourself, you solve this universally. But you have an immediate feedback loop in your mirror, which is a very different way of existing. Because if you can bridge that divide and see yourself at all times and treat yourself as if you would yourself, you are going to have a totally different union. Okay? All right. So... Um, for stepping inside someone's body, I highly suggest checking out my videos on quantum jumping, um, maybe checking out my meditations on quantum jumping. But the idea behind it is you want to absorb the frequency of that. You want to make something normal, okay? Things like going into meditation and um, coming back with the vibration of that person's perspective um, I have a meditation as well on uh, my site that uh, is about teaching you guys to develop telepathy. This perhaps is the best way to step into someone's body and see because I give you a, a sort of guided dialogue to get into their body. Okay, What you have to understand is all of these bodies are inside you. They are not outside. I don't care what it looks like. It is not outside. It is inside you. This invisible force that is animating every single body outside of you, this invisible force is your experience on display, made in new patterns, animating the carcasses outside. Bodies are 100% illusion. Okay, so um, if this helps you, please check, go to my website, check out these meditations. If you are able to um, embody the state, great. But here's what I'm saying. You want to do this somewhat like a um, actor. You want to come back with that vibration. So the person that taught me this is now dead. His name is Bert Goldman. And he was able to do this so well that, for example, when he wanted, uh, he'd never taken a professional picture before, but he decided he wanted to be a photographer. So he would go inside his body, go embody the state of the person that was a photographer, go mimic the same actions that the photographer would do, 
okay and then come back with that vibration then he took a whole bunch of pictures that looked like crap but the advice he got from himself to himself was to stand still so although it didn't make sense he comes back he stands still he takes a whole bunch of pictures All right this is just one story of his takes a whole bunch of pictures and I don't know what happened in that moment, but because he had embodied the energy of his photographer, an idea came to him out of nowhere, out the blue, right? That comes from embodying the state of the photographer. And he realized that he could put all of these pictures together and make a collage and make a whole new different type of picture, a whole artwork. So he actually became the photographer by embodying the state of the person, okay? In love, it's so much easier because you recognize yourself to embody this person, but you can do this with any human being. You want to try to understand their perspective. You want to take their point of perception. And the only way you can do this is by taking a moment, shutting off your eyes, closing in, and then reviewing the argument from the observer's standpoint. Okay, you want God's neutral stance looking at the light and the reflection interacting. That view is way, way, way more enhanced than what happens when you're in 3D. So I'll give you the analogy of why that is. Okay, if you were at the bottom of a mountain, you are limited by how far you can see because you're at the bottom of the mountain. This bottom of the mountain means this is your 3D moment that you just lived, okay? If you climb to the top of that mountain, how far you can see just went up exponentially, right? That's the equivalent of shutting down, taking a moment to reflect on the argument, and trying to see their perspective. You climb the mountain into yourself and you're able to look at the interaction between you and your partner. And, and with that stance of neutrality, without your wound in the way, because you're looking at it from the observer standpoint, you are able to see the argument in a whole different kind of light. You're able to see an expanded view because as I said before, in relationships, here's what's happening, okay? There's you, the source, and then there's your mirror. The space in between is all of your experiences that you form together. This is how the light can see itself because as I explained, if I asked you to look at your own eyes, you would say, sure, hand me the mirror because you can't look at your own eyes, right? This is how people serve as your mirror. In order to see into yourself, you have to have the comparison, okay? So in these cases, if you're able to do that and you're able to take the expanded view from a neutral standpoint, once you've calmed down, you would be able to communicate without going up here in, in, in I don't know, what do you call that, uh, volume, yelling, arguing, trying to argue your point. It's, it's pointless. You're so much more calm when you can do this. This expanded view of what is going on behind the scenes is available to you at any minute of the day because the truth is 3D is your past experience on display. You can recall these memories at will and you can recall them in your head. And when you recall them in your head, you have the expanded view. Not the view that was happening when you were on the bottom floor of that mountain. You have the expanded view. The view that allows you to see both perspectives without wounding. That allows you to look at it from an observational standpoint. Because now you're not pretending to be the character that is animating the other side. You're outside of that. That is key. When you do these things, it is very, very helpful. So the reason that I'm recommending that meditation on my website, Developing Telepathy, please do check it out, is because I guide you through that experience, I guide you through your chakras, and I guide you to the place where you can speak to the higher version of your beloved and convey whatever messages you want. 
you do not have to be apart from your beloved but if you are it makes no difference because the time and space is all created by you you make time and space you make everything in fact the reason that you would have be apart from someone is because you yourself are protecting yourself from your wounds your wounds dictate everything until you figure out what they are okay partners help you make the unconscious visible and if we are not aware of that and we are not accepting of that what do you think happens world war three and it's unnecessary your relationships with your partners should be very harmonious and they're harmonious when you totally accept yourself this way. When you understand that you're able to take that moment, you're able to reflect and respond, you have a totally different way of appearing. What happens is that communication is always sacred because if you take a moment to stop and think, oh my God, I'm talking to myself. Let me be kind to myself. Because if you don't, okay, you do not escape the karma. You do not escape the karma and your partner will do what you did to them back. Not on purpose, not intentionally. You're on autopilot, remember? And you will ask yourself, why did I just do that? And you have to be able to take an honest look at the feedback loop and say, okay, it's my experience. This saves couples arguing countless hours of silent treatments. It saves because you will always act in loving service to the one you are treating as yourself. But if you forget that you are dealing with yourself, you're going to be on the receiving end of that karma. Okay, so if we were neglectful of an anniversary or birthday or something like that, they'll do it to you. They don't mean to, but you will see it. You always get what you put in. And even though you get to enjoy this relationship with another human being or what appears to be another human being, you are enjoying it because you love yourself. And as a result, they show up as you are and they are always showing up as you are. This is what love is. And it may not be pretty, but I told you, in love is love reflected. So if you are not love, you will not receive love. If you don't take a moment to stop and bridge the gap between two people and say, that is me as well, let me recognize myself. then you're gonna argue a whole lot more than necessary. And the worst part about it, because I'm behind the veil, I can see what's happening. Literally what you look like is you're yelling at your mirror. You're yelling at the reflection in the mirror the same way a cat would growl at the cat reflection. As ridiculous as this image is, keep it in your mind when you are tempted to argue because you are dealing with yourself. You cannot escape it. The points of contention are the wounds that you need to look at. It is not easy. If you have not done any work on yourself, it's going to be a whole lot harder than that. But the relationship that lasts, lasts because you are 100% accepting of yourself. And as a result, you have no fear in this relationship. You're not taken for granted. You're willing to voice what you need without fear of reproach. You're willing to voice, voice your perspective. You're, you know, that kind of thing is very, you're very open about it because if you realize that you are looking at yourself, you have just bridged the divide and that is love. That is love. That is a harmonious union. It is always a harmonious union. When you know it like this, it's, it's pretty incredible because what happens as a result is the person that you love will call you their universe. They'll be like, you are totally my universe. Like, you're everything. You're everything. And the reason that is so important to hear is because they're not lying. 
your experience is on display. You are everything. So for your 3D to tell you that, that's a confirmation loop right there if I ever heard one. But the fights, the arguments and everything, these things are your ego's way of protecting you from your wounds. And if you're not able to take a moment before those escalations happen and able to review these arguments, these moments in your mind, then you won't understand what they're showing you. And you'll get mad at them for it too. You know, like uh, in my past, if someone rose their voice at me way too high, an octave too high, I'm not the same person. I'm not the same person. All of a sudden I turn off. My autopilot goes on. Your tone's a little too high. <laughs> right? So if I know that, I'm going to stop myself because in those moments, I will be tempted to talk back. I will be tempted to yell. And if I can take a moment to slow down, stop, let me see what it is I'm actually hearing. And if you're able to then come back and talk to each other, arguments don't have to be these long drawn out things. But you are never not in a relationship with yourself. Okay. And the best thing about this understanding is when you are able to trade bodies with your partner, and I mean this sincerely, by bodies. What do I mean by bodies? I mean when you are able to trade the point of perception, because all bodies are you anyway. When you are able to trade the point of perception so that you're able to see both the nine and the six, that's the person that's able to have a conversation that doesn't lead to arguing. That's the person that's able to become both bodies at once. But there's an aspect of yourself, this invisible nature that is not your body, that is an observer of everything that existed when you were born, that existed before you were born. That aspect of yourself that you don't count because you think you are it when you were born, that aspect of yourself has a higher view perspective of what it is viewing. You need to become this. You need to become this. If you want harmony in your relationships, being able to take an honest look at these things changes how you interact with the world. I know this is somewhat you know, advanced because I'm talking about what it looks like behind the veil, but literally behind the veil, this is what's happening, okay? This is always true. The outside world is your mirror. Everything out there is your mirror. You exist outside of the mirror, right? The equivalent of that would be, okay? I want to explain so you can understand the difference between out there and in here. The equivalent of that would be, if I am out there focused, would be me trying to reach for the brush in the vanity in the reflection, in the mirror. But that, that brush doesn't exist in there. It exists outside of the mirror, okay? That's the difference here. Since I know it exists outside of the mirror with me, everything that I am perceiving outside of me is actually happening inside of me. And this is a way much deeper conversation it's, you know, than it is, right? But what I'm trying to say is if you really truly have accepted everything you are, then these arguments are going to be less in between. But if you're having these points of a contention, and you know, really truly, you guys, we are not creative in our arguing. If you notice, if you hit a rough patch, you may argue about the same thing over and over again, like six or seven times. over the course of several years, like you'll drop it and then it'll come back up. You'll drop it and you'll come back up. You'll drop it and you'll come back up. Okay. When that occurs, that is occurring because you need to develop this perspective. The one where I'm telling you to take a step back, observe the fight, go back. If you want, use the power of your hindsight, especially if you've discovered a pattern, look at all of these patterns at once, consolidate them and look at the bigger picture. 
when you can identify how you have made this and what it is you're protecting from, the 3D will calm down. But you are the only reason for anything. You are first cause of every effect. I cannot say this enough. So if you want to glorify um, problems in the world, then you should know that you will see problems in the world. Why? Because the source that is outside of the mirror has just declared there's going to be problems in the world. So then what happens? The problems in the world exist. It doesn't have to be that grand scale. If you expect to be hurt, then what happens with your outer reflection? You don't even have to be in a long-term relationship. You could just be getting to know each other. But if you expect to be hurt, the filter will be defensive and it will cause this cognitive dissonance. At the end of the day, the shortcut is please realize the only person in the relationship is with yourself. The other person is acting like a mirror to show you inside of you. You must, must take a moment to reflect back on your memory so you can see how it's you. When you develop peace over this, this piece then resonates, okay? And what you end up with is a partner that can't be mad at you for long, that just, you know, comes and kisses you on the forehead. I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. And then you say, yeah, I'm sorry too. I just, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's, it's easy. But you have to understand what's going on behind the veil. That's the most important part. I can't stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. You are the veil. You are the veil. You are the reason you can't see into heaven. If you haven't seen it yet. I already see it, so it is what it is, right? Like I can peer into, you know, my friend could lose a ring. And so I become invisible and I just put it in her space. And then she'll be like, oh, I found it. I'll be like, I know you did. Okay? I can see behind the veil like that. Everybody can. But the reason that you don't is because there are experiences that you haven't accepted about yourself that allows you to see people as separate. And so I talk about romantic relationships so much because what's true of one romantic relationship is true of the whole world. But at the end of the day, no matter what, the universal experience, the greater aspect of yourself, that which is Christ, known as Christ, or that which is known as God, or that state of being, whether you are being that or not right now, is irrelevant. That invisible nature, that animates this body and every other body outside. And our focus when it's out there is one that is slumbering. Because imagine how much harder you'd work in 3D if you didn't understand that you could do this, if you didn't understand that you could look at your own experiences, if you didn't understand that it was you. How much harder are you going to work? Are you going to fight against yourself? That was necessary when we were asleep. That was necessary. We were doing something called the gathering information stage. We were gathering data so that we can understand the cause and effect of every action in our lives. We are always doing this. There is no judgment. There is no good or bad. This is what we do. So when you didn't know, it was important because you were studying that. We're grown now. We do know. The cat's out of the bag. And since you do know, then understanding how your experiences are in display is key, okay? Purposely, me, I've said this before, I choose romantic partners based on how opposite they are from me, okay? If you think about it, the extreme opposite version is the closest version to yourself. So this allows me to see a way more expanded view of the universe, okay? Because this has to be the extreme opposite of everything I think I am, therefore, it is facing closest to me 
they sing the other way. When I can be this body or this body, I can see in all directions. Which is how I ended up knowing what's behind the veil. This is true of everybody. Okay, so I'll continue to do this. I'll probably make more uh, guided meditations on embodying people, becoming them, that kind of thing. I would say it's a lot easier for empaths. It's a lot easier for um, metaphysical people, psychic people. It's a lot easier for us only because we have no choice. We've known about our oneness because even when we didn't want to be connected, we were connected, right? So it's a little bit easier. So for those that are turning on this empathic gene, don't fear it, okay? You have something called mirror neurons in your brain. They will automatically do this. So I'll tell you how you can know that your mirror neurons are working. Have you ever been watching a sporting event and the guy like breaks his leg or something? What do you do? You flinch. You flinch. You automatically, oh, you feel that in your leg. Ah! that feeling, <laughs> those are your mirror neurons at work. So your mirror neurons are working with or without you. What I'm asking you to do is become aware of those because when you become aware of those, you have a totally different point of perception. You're able to embody states. That's what you're doing, embodying the states, okay? Um, this is getting a lot more complicated. It's way more advanced, but I'll say this, okay? Your brain creates things based on subconscious archetypes. You are entering symbolic images you are making. These images are pre-made, but you can move in and out. You don't have to stay in any predetermined state, right? But all of these things are created in your head first, and then you enter them. If you understand this, it's a game changer. Game changer. So that even if you can't resolve it, if you are able to, before you go to bed, do this, okay, and see a good outcome in the morning, by the time you wake up, your partner will be kissing you on the cheek or there will be some way that you will, you'll make up because all that you are doing is moving in mind. Everything is in mind. And if you're looking out there, then you're not doing it right. Okay, out there only serves as your mirror. The source of everything is on the other side of that mirror. If you understand that it changes everything, especially in relationships, okay, you guys? Um, I will get more into this. Um, it's probably more part two of my Behind the Veil course, more, way more <laughs> stuff, I guess. But what I wanna say is, please, please, you know, think about these things because these are the types of things that will be game changers in your relationships because the minute you know you are the one, so does your reflection. So does your reflection. Okay? I'm going to leave you with this last, last thing. Okay. <laughs> the shortcut is, no, you're the one. Because when you get in a relationship, what is it that we automatically do? I'm going to reverse your thinking, okay? The first thing we do, um, typically as women or feminine energy, is we start like, is he the one? And we start envisioning all the possibilities that this person can provide. But we're so focused on them being the one, right? And when it doesn't work out, <laughs> why hasn't it worked out? Because you were focused on them being the one, not you being the one. And since you didn't focus on that, then the outer reflection cannot know that you are the one. It can only be as you are. In love is love reflected. You don't know you're the one. Why would this person who is supposed to mirror you know that you're the one, right? Obvious, but not so obvious because a lot of us do this. They're the one, they're special, oh my God, it can't be anybody else but them, right? But see, in doing that, we've already done ourselves a disservice. The shortcut is know you're the one, okay? 
and it doesn't matter who you like. I'm spe speaking of myself specifically. I chose a guy who was not in any way attracted to me as more than a friend, okay? At one point in my life, I but I chose him because he was the exact opposite of me, okay? And so I chose him. And for a long time, I thought he was the one. And I focused only on that. So my heart was so sad because he was the one and he wasn't paying attention to me. Ah! You know, but I was a friend and I was cool, but I was like, you know, mm -hmm. and then it hit on, it hit me like, like a ton of bricks because I've never wanted to be the one for someone else. Like never. It was the first time it ever happened to me. So <laughs> then I realized, wait a minute. I'm the one. I'm the one. And then I stopped paying attention to everything that he was doing, anything at all. I told him how I felt. He even told me, I don't feel the same way. And I, okay, cool. I still know I'm the one. Go out there and try to find somebody else like me. I even said that. Within the week, after seven years, I don't feel like forever. Actually, it wasn't seven years. Four years? After four years, okay? He realized I was right. I was the one. Why? Because I finally knew I was the one. So if I can save you all of those years, please take this shortcut. Stop struggling against yourself. No, you are the one. Don't worry about what they're doing. If you know, they know. That's the shortcut. Um, I hope that helps. I hope I got you guys thinking. I hope it's a shortcut. And as for embodying states, I will try and come up with new guided meditations, more stuff, practicing the state. But I do highly recommend listening to the telepathy one, just in case, because it helps you embody the state. You want to practice embodying the state. You want to practice you're collapsing space and time and interacting with your inner being because when you have peace over yourself, your partner will be peaceful with you. In love is love reflected. Always true. All right, you guys. All right, thank you. Have a good evening. Love you. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll come up with a, uh, a new way, um, some easier ways. But if you guys have questions in terms of how to embody the state, please leave the comments below and I will try to address them or even make a new video explaining the specifics on that so that um, you guys get what you're looking for. All right. Thank you. Bye.